Okay, so here I have two more games and I'm going to introduce the concept Nash Equilibrium. Um, so first thing first, if you have a game, try to find the dominant strategy equilibrium. Um, but I'm, because it's very strong equilibrium concept, it basically says, well, players are gonna play those strategies simply because you know, other actions are not giving them higher payoff. Um, so, um, so let's focus on the first game and then I'm gonna solve the second game. So in the first game, I still have two players, A and B. Each player has two actions, top, bottom for player A, left, right for player B. So here I try to find the dominant strategy for player A. Well, remember, because he is the row player, I am basically comparing the first numbers across rows. So six is higher than three. That means top is better than bottom. But bottom is, I mean, one is higher than zero. That means bottom is better than top. So therefore, there is no domination between these two strategies for player A. Well, what about player B? Well, for player B, because he is the column player, I compare the second numbers across columns. Four better than three, one better than zero. All right. Um, so you know what? Right is better than top. Um, I, I'm sorry, uh, right is better than left, and then right is better than left. So right is always better than left. So whatever your opponent does, whether top or bottom, doesn't matter, right will always give you higher, strictly higher payoff. So therefore, player B actually has a dominant strategy. B has dominant strategy, uh, which is uh, playing right. All right. Well, given that, um, well, player A didn't have a dominant strategy, but fine, I can iterate this reasoning. The player B should never play left because it's a dominant strategy, dominated strategy. So therefore, given that B is going to play right, uh, for player A, it basically boils down whether he would like to get payoff zero or payoff one. So this column will never occur because B will never choose this column. So obviously player A prefers one rather than zero, so he should go for bottom. So as a result of this, bottom and right is the dominant strategy equilibrium. Dominant strategy equilibrium. Okay, so we're, we're done, we solved this. Um, but now let's look at this game and then I will come back and look at and find the Nash equilibrium of this game. So in this game, very simply, so for, I have two players, player one and player two. Player one has three actions, player two has three actions, U, M, D, L, C, R. So this is the payoff matrix. So for player one here, I'm comparing the first numbers across rows because one is the row player. So M is better than uh, U better than D. Here, M is better than U equals to D. However, here, U is better than D better than M. So therefore, M is not a dominant strategy. U is not dominant strategy because yeah, U is equal to D and sometimes worse than M. I mean, U does not dominate D. And um, yeah, yeah, U is... All right, so D is weakly worse than U, all right? So U is, I'm sorry, D is weakly worse than U, right? So three is higher than, better than two, two is equal to two, four is equal to, four, four is higher than three, but that doesn't make U a dominant strategy, all right? Uh, it's not dominating D because it's sometimes giving the same payoffs, all right? So for that reason, we conclude that player one has no dominant strategy. Okay, what about player two? Well, we're comparing the second numbers across columns. So here what I have is L is high, better than C, which is better than R. Here, um, C is better than L, which is better than R. And then here, uh, R is better than uh, C, which is better than L. So R never dominates anyone, all right? So R is sometimes better, but sometimes worse. Uh, L never dominates anyone because sometimes the best, sometimes the worst. And C also, oh, okay, C and L, uh, C does not dominate L because uh, L sometimes is better than C, but C sometimes better than L. 
and C is never dominating R because uh, R is actually better than C sometimes. So depending on what the first player does, depending on the row, sometimes R is better, sometimes L is better, sometimes C is better. So therefore, there is no dominant strategy uh, for player two either. So then the question is, you may say, you may conjecture, well, why don't we pick the weakly better strategy here? You can, you could, but again, that's not how we define dominant strategy. There shouldn't be any equality. Right, the dominant strategy should always give you strictly higher payoff. So not all games have dominant strategies like this one or dominant strategy equilibrium. So for that reason, we use a stronger solution concept, which is a Nash equilibrium. Every game has a Nash equilibrium, whether in pure strategies or mixed strategies. Both of these games have pure strategy Nash equilibrium. So first thing first, what is Nash equilibrium? Well, Nash equilibrium is a stability concept, all right? Um, if we have two players, player one is choosing the best action available to him given player two's actions, and player two choosing the best available action to him given player one's action, all right? So we call this best responding. Each player best responds his opponent. Well, the question is, this is these are simultaneous move games, right? It's like they choose the players choose their actions simultaneously at the same time. So if I'm choosing my strategy with the same time my opponent does, how would I know his strategy and how would I best respond it? Isn't that idiotic? Well, yes. <laughs> So the Nash equilibrium is a stability concept, but it's a bit weird. How so? The Nash equilibrium, the interpretation of the Nash equilibrium is the following. So imagine the game is over and the players learn their outcomes. I mean the outcome, all right? So you played up, you played down. So that's the outcome. Then the question the players ask to themselves the following. Okay, given that I learned my opponent's play the strategy, well, do I regret of my choice? Uh, would I do better um, given my opponent's choice, which I can't change, obviously, but or I can't change my choice either, but do I regret about my choice? Well, regretting means the following, is like, given that I now know my opponent's action, did I play a strategy that gives me the highest payoff? If the answer is yes, then I don't regret my choice. If my answer is no, that means I regret my choice. And so we call that, well, if anybody is regretting his or her choice, uh, well, that shouldn't be the outcome of this game. The outcome of this game should be such that no player is regretting his or her choice. All right? Well, I mean, why does that matter? So you can think of this as like, we play this game with different players over and over again throughout our lifetime. And so once I choose something today and I regret, tomorrow with pro potentially different players, when I play this game, I will never choose that strategy because it's, it's regretful. But if we both play our strategies in such a way that we don't regret, it means like it's stable, it's like, uh, you know, he, my opponent doesn't have incentive to change it in the next play. I have no incentive to change it in the next play. So it's, it seems like this is sort of a focal point. All right. So that's sort of what the Nash uh, means really. Okay. So again, although the players play the game simultaneously and they don't know each other's actions, the Nash equilibrium concept treats this as if the players observe the outcome and then ask themselves, do I regret with my choice? Okay, and so the Nash equilibrium outcome is the regret-free outcome. All right, so let's find the regret-free outcome in that sense. So how do I do that? Well, this is what I call underlying the payoff. So I'm gonna use a different color. Um, so the question is the following. For example, the top left, right? Would this outcome be regret-free? Well, the first player playing top, the second player playing left, is that regret-free? Well, so the game is over. We observe that this is the outcome and uh, they make payoff six and three. Will player one, A, I mean, 
regret? Well, obviously not, because six is the highest payoff he could get. Well, what about player B, though? Well, by playing left, he got three, right? But in fact, if he would have played right, he would have gotten four rather than three. So he would actually get a higher payoff than three. Um, so given that he observes his opponent is playing top, played top, he would say, shit. I should have played right rather than left, by which I would guarantee four payoff. So therefore, this is a regretful outcome for player B, and hence, not, oops, no Nash. Okay? Well, what about the other outcome? There are four possible outcomes, right? Top right. Okay, is this re regret-free outcome? We just mentioned that given that the first guy, the A uh, player, chooses top, right is the regret-free uh, strategy. Well, what about the A guy then? So if this is the outcome with the payoff 0 for, the A player would say, oh, shit. If I knew that my opponent was playing right, I would certainly, rather than playing top and get 0, I would certainly prefer to play bottom and get 1. 1 is better than 0. So given that now I observe my opponent has chosen right, I say, I regret my choice of top. I wish I was playing bottom instead. So therefore, this is going to be, again, a regretful outcome and hence not Nash. Okay, well, what about bottom right? I don't know why I switched to uh, black color. Uh, okay, so with the payoffs one and one. Well, Player A is going to say, okay, so if I knew my opponent was playing right, all right, I certainly would choose to play bottom because rather than zero, I would prefer to get one. So player A is not going to regret. Well, what about player B? Player B is going to say, oh, given that my player chose to play bottom, uh, the best thing for me is to play right rather than left because one is higher than zero. So you know what? I don't regret that. So neither player I, A, nor player B regrets. Hence, that's no regret outcome. And hence, this is a Nash equilibrium. This is exactly how we calculate the Nash equilibrium of a game. By the way, the bottom right is also dominant strategy equilibrium. Is this coincidence? No. If a strategy profile, this is what we call strategy profile, is a dominant strategy equilibrium, it must be Nash equilibrium. All right, it must be. Well, is there any other Nash equilibrium? Some games have multiple Nash equilibria. In this game, no, but you can check. There's one more outcome, the bottom uh, left. Bottom left with the, oops with the payoffs 3-0. Well, here, player B would certainly regret of playing left because he's getting zero. Instead, if he knew his opponent was playing bottom, he would certainly go for right and hence to get the payoff of one. And hence, this is no Nash. Okay? Well, do I have to go through this by all those four cases? Well, for this game, maybe it's simple, but for other games, like I have here nine possible outcomes, so it's not always feasible, there's an easier way, which is what I call underlying. So if player A, so I underline the payoffs that corresponds to best response for an, a player. So if player A plays top, all right, so if this was the outcome um, for player A, what would be the no regret strategy for player B, or the best response for player B. Is it right or left? Well, right would bring him four payoff, so therefore he would definitely go for right. So I underline four. If, however, it happens that player A plays bottom, what would be the regret-free strategy? Well, it's right because it yields payoff one rather than left yielding payoff zero. So right is always a best response. All right, for player B, which makes sense because B is a dominant strategy. If, if a strategy is always better, it should be always the best response. Okay, here, if player B is playing left, 
So suppose this is the outcome, all right? So you learn that player B was playing left. I mean, he did play left. What would be your regret-free action? Is it top or bottom? I'm comparing the first numbers across rows again. Well, obviously you would go for top because six is a higher number than three. And here, if you know that your opponent played right, what would be your regret-free uh, strategy? It would be bottom because one is higher than zero. So whenever the payoffs, both payoffs are underlined, it means both players are best responding each other. So given that I now know your action, the strategy, I'm not going to regret. And given that I, player A observes B's actions, A will not regret. So no player will regret or both players will best respond. And hence that's the, I mean, whenever I have double, both numbers underlined, those are Nash equilibria. Here, there's only one uh, Nash equilibrium. Okay? I use exactly the same strategy here. So what are the, or what is the Nash equilibrium? If player one chooses U, what is the best response for player two? Is it left or C or uh, R? Well, go for the highest path, obviously. So if player one happens to play M, so that's the outcome, what would be the no regret action? C, because two is the highest path. If player one happens to play D, what would be the no regret strategy or action? It would be R. All right. Well, if player two happens to play L, so you observe that your opponent played L, what would be the strategy that will lead to no um, uh, regret for you, for player one? Is it M? Is it U? Is it D? It's M. All right. So given that player two plays C, the best response or the no regret strategy is clearly M. And again, given that player two plays R, the no regret, not again, but the no regret strategy is playing uh, U because four is the highest. So is there any um, tuples that both underline? Yes, which is this one. I mean the M and then the C. So this is the uh, Nash equilibrium, Nash equilibrium of this game. And it's unique Nash equilibrium in pure strategies, okay? This is exactly how we calculate the Nash equilibrium in pure strategies. Um, in the next video, I'm gonna do some more exam examples and then argue that in some games, uh, pure strategy Nash equilibrium doesn't exist. And hence, we're going to extend our tool set and introduce the concept called mixed strategy Nash equilibrium, all right, uh, coming up.